So, just good morning from my side. Today is an English Sabbath, and um, for the first time in five months, I've decided to preach in English. Um, not because I don't want to, also, but because I know I can't. And uh, so today I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will please equip me so that I can break down this barrier, this English barrier, this language barrier that I have, and that He will equip me so that I will be able to still be uh, giving a good message and being true to the gospel. And I think that's all what we all want. So what I'm, what I'm presenting to you today is actually what I presented for my master's a week ago at Pius. But what I've done is I've taken out the, the, the academical jargon. Okay, so I've just kept the inspired words and I've taken away the Greek and the Hebrew. But I think it's of utmost importance that what I'm presenting to you today as a Christian and as a set of the Adventist. So our theme for today is, what if God's judgment is the greatest gift to humanity and the, human, and the universe? So before we continue, let's just pray for you. Dear Jesus, we are so privileged to come into your presence this morning. And uh, we're so privileged to be in church this morning. There's so many people that's longing come to church, to go to church, but are unable. And we know that through the Holy Spirit, you are here with us today. And you will keep us safe. And we pray for that firstly, but more than that, we pray that you will open up our minds and be with me personally and equip me today through this language. But help me also to, try to stay true to the gospel this morning. Please come into our presence and fill our hearts with your love, with your mercy, with your joy. May we be transformed this morning. May we have, have a greater revelation about who you are after this sermon. Not because of me, but because of the word you have given us in your word. Is my prayer in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So we've got to be honest this morning. Who of you thought about the judgment of God? Your personal judgment, God judging your name. Have you ever thought about it? Who fears it? Who of you is bang for the word, yo? A lot of us, man. Why do you think people fear the judgment? You've got, to, you've got to talk to me this morning. Why do people fear the judgment of God? Because they pass transgressions. They pass transgressions. We don't see ourselves how God sees us. And we don't see the mercy of God. At the same time as we see His justice. We don't see the mercy of God as we see His justice. We can't accept the fact that God forgives us. We, we don't have faith that God can forgive us. We can't hide anything from Him. We can't hide anything from Him. And that's true. So we hide stuff from each other. But sometimes we think we can hide stuff from God. But the reality is, at the end of the day, we can't. So God sees us for who we really are. Sometimes when I read the word, Samuel and, and God calling 
and call him human root man and, and she also refers to the fact that God called Abraham his friend and she says when she reads the Bible she understands that God is a righteous God he's a holy God and she looks at herself and she she, 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 she sees her own imperfections and she comes to the real, realization she won't be able to make it my next question is have you ever been lied to? <laughs> Have you ever been lied to? How do you feel when someone lies to you? Disappointed? Angry? Cross? So? Wiser. Wiser? Okay, we've become wiser. But when people lie to us, at the beginning, when they tell the lies normally, and we haven't discerned that it, it's actually a lie. We are being deceived. deceived. And that's what makes us upset the moment we realize we have been deceived. And that's what Satan is after. He's deceived us. He's deceived us into thinking that in the judgment, We have an angry God looking down at fallen humanity where everything is written up in books and everything up being kept written, being written in books in order to judge us and to destroy us. That's what we are fearing, isn't it? And this morning I've got one of the most difficult tasks to try and change that concept of you. Because that lie, that deception Satan has taught us is his accusation in front of the whole universe. His actual accusation why we cannot. Why God is not fit to rule the universe. His accusation is God is not a love God. He's not a gracious God. So have you ever been lied to? Yes. Have you been deceived by Satan? Yes. And this morning I will ask the question, can the judgment of God maybe be the biggest gift, the greatest gift God has ever given to humanity and the whole universe. Okay. Let's, let's go through it. 1 Peter 4 verse 12. Open up your Bibles if you have it there. Um, I'm going to go through a few, few texts this morning. So please bear with me. I'm going to try and be as quick as possible. But I don't want to rush it. Because this is extremely important. If there's ever a message that we as Christians are supposed to understand. If there's ever a message that's relevant to us today, then it's this one. 1 Peter 4 verse 12, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, if I'm not mistaken, and it reads as follows. Beloved, do not... Okay, now. I'm going to read from this translation in front of me on the top of Peter. <coughs> 1 Peter 4 verse 12 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come to you to test you. So if any one of you comes out of the charismatic movement that where they preach prosperity gospel, the sermon will not be for you today. <laughs> this is the opposite of that. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come onto you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the suffering of Christ. What must we do when we go through sufferings as Christians? Do we? We blame God, don't we? Because we are deceived. So that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed if you are insulted because of the name of Christ. Listen to me, all you charismatic people. We are blessed. If you 
consulted because the name of Christ. You are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God and of God rest upon you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. Verse 16. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. Hoe nie skaam wees, as dier jylle hier verdrukken gaan, vir Christus onthaal nie. But praise God if you bear that name. For it is time for what? For the judgment. The beginning of God's household. Where does just, just, judgment start? God's judgment. At his own house. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? It's an interesting question Peter asked here. He says, for the time is now for the judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Even if we go through trials, Peter is asking us here to remain committed to God, to remain faithful. This is our, it's not on the screen, why not? about the end and the remnant's mission. Am I right? So what is the remnant's greatest mission? Our greatest message currently for the world? Hmm? Yeah, we're good at preaching the three angels message. But it's a certain message within the three angels message. Give glory to God. Give glory to God comes after this message we give to the people. Does he create mountains? No. That's no, not that one. Okay. Revelation 14, verse 7. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. <coughs> You guys must talk to me because you said that I have it. Why is the greatest message that we can give to people? Fear God, give glory to Him, because the hour of His judgment has come. Did you tell me that Sorry? Sorry? Yes, that's when it started. But why do people need to know that the judgment of God has started? The hour of his judgment has come. I want to make you think this morning. And because Jesus Christ is standing in our place. Because Jesus Christ is standing in our place? He's coming soon. We're living in the last days. So as a church, okay, before I get to that slide. As a church, we've got a distinct message at the end of time. For a dying world. But a dying world does not see atonement. What is Jesus currently doing for us? Interceding. Interceding making atonement for us. But the rest of the Christian world looks at the cross of Jesus. And the atonement for them enters. But we as a church believe, I'm going to read it quickly, 
He Christ brought to the cross between heaven and earth. And when the Father beheld the sacrifice of His Son, He bowed before it in recognition of its perfection. It is enough, He said. The atonement is complete. So we as a church believe that the atonement made at Calvary is enough and complete. Okay? Adventists are fully convinced that the death of Christ is full and complete atonement for the sins of human beings. But we believe in a broader concept of atonement. So we just don't believe, we not just believe in the cross, okay? Adventists use the term atonement to designate not only the death of Christ, but also his work of intercession. Followed by his session to heaven. Thus in Adventists understanding that atonement includes both the death and the intercession of Christ. Having made the atonement on the cross, Christ ascended to heaven as our great high priest, there to be our intercessor and to minister on our behalf the benefits of the atonement made available at the cross. Since his accession, Christ ever lives to make intercession for us. And this intercession is part of the work of reconciliation or atonement in his life. So we believe currently Jesus is our great high priest in heaven and what he is doing is making intercession and atonement for his people to believe in him. For Christ has not entered into a holy place made with hands. So where is Christ currently? In his final mission. Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands which are copies of the true, but in heaven itself, now to appear, to appear in the presence of God for us. And this is what Satan has deceived us about. We do not understand what Christ is currently doing for us. The Christian world does not understand our need for an intercession at this moment. In the verse is three. So this is a a picture or not a picture, a drawing of the earthly tabernacle system. And I don't want to go through all of this, but Christ's last mission in heaven, according to the book of Hebrews, is in the most holy place. So this is only a shadow of the heavenly one. So I'm not concerned about everything that all the equipment there. What we need to find focus is on is the function. Christ's function inside of us. Okay. So now we're going to get to the to the point. So we believe in the full atonement of Christ on the cross. But we believe in a bigger concept of atonement. Are you with me? So the, so the work of Christ does not stop with his crucifixion but it continues up to now. Daniel 7, as I looked, thrones were set in place in the ancient of days, took his seat. This is God the Father. His clothing was white as snow, and his hair was, it was white like wool. Tani. Daniel skip on his hair, gesicht in die prentjie van die perfectheid, die reinheid van God. But this is also a picture we get of a court sitting. His, frame, his throne was flaming with fire and he rules for all of ladies. Listen to verse 10. And a river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Does this pre-investigative judgment take place just between God and Jesus? Is it a seated Thousands upon thousands attending him. Ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. So in this pre investigative judgment, current taking place from 1844, according to our understanding of the prophecy given in. Daniel 8, 14, 2300 nights and mornings and the 
essentially who we think is the witness of it. Why? And the books were open. Verse 13, in my vision at night I looked and before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of day and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worship him. So what we have here, Daniel sees the ancient of days, God the Father setting the whole court system in place. The witnesses is there. God the Father goes and sits and he opens up the books of judgment. And the next thing, next thing he sees is someone else entering the scene. And who is this? Christ. And what is given to Christ? Authority. Glory. Power. And, that, and, and, I, and I underline that is all nations and people of every language worship Him. What do you think Daniel thought that is? Does it sound familiar to Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7? His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Who's got an authority during the judgment? Jesus. In the typical service, only those who had become had come before God with confession and repentance, and who sins through the blood of the sin offering, were transferred to the sanctuary and part in the service of the day of the day. So in the earthly system, daily the people would go to the temple and make sacrifices for their sins. But it was only those people whose sins was transferred into the sanctuary when, on the day of atonement, which had a part in the day of so the great day of final atonement and investigative judgment, which started in 1844, the only case considered are those who, who are being judged now. Repentant sinner. And that's why I'm asking, what if the judgment of God is the greatest gift to man and to you? Why is it important for you to make sure your name now comes up in that judgment court? The judgment of the wicked is a distinct and separate work that takes place later in a later period. If we, if we are not now judged by God at a later stage, we will not have intercessor. Do you understand the importance of that? We will not have an advocate. Revelation 20 verse 12. Then I saw a great white throne. He moved, seated on the earth, and the heavens fled, fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne of God. And what was opened? Books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The judge, God's judgment is based on books. I'm just quickly going to go through the books. And the thing is, we've got to make sure our names is in that book. So the Bible mentions three types of books. The book of life, the book of remembrance, and the book of sins. The book of life contains the names of all who have ever entered the service of God. And now, this is where it gets serious. This is where it gets personal. How sure are you you've entered the service of God? Jesus bade his disciples rejoice because your name is written in the heaven. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, verse 3, Indeed, true companion, I ask you also, to help these women who have struggled my struggle in the cause of the gospel, together with them and also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names 
ask you, and I'm serious this morning. I'm not here to entertain you this morning. I want to ask you, have you entered into service with God? Are you sure your name is written in the book of life? And the characters are found to be in harmony with the law of God. His sins will be blotted out. What happens to those people who name is written in the book of life, who entered into service with God, their names will be blotted out of the book of sins, and they themselves will be accounted worthy of eternal life. The Lord declares by the prophet Isaiah, I, even I am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake. And we need to get back to this for his own sake. And will not remember thy sins. This is the good news when your name is written in the book of life. And you have repented of your sins. While Jesus is pleading for the subjects of this case, Satan accuses them before God and God as those cases. So we have this Christ standing in front of God and God. We've got a court, court city. The books are open. And you might ask me, why does God need books? Do you think God needs books? No. But remember, the attributes God has for being omniscient, for being able to see our hearts, the rest of the unfallen beings does not have. So there's this court scene of tens of thousands of tens of thousands of unfallen beings sitting there as witnesses. So maybe the judgment, the pre admin judgment, is not about us. Maybe it's not about us. Maybe it's about God. Maybe that is the reason why everything is written up in books, scrolls, documented. For God's sake. So that in the judgment he can open up all three books. Jesus standing there with the marks of the crucifixion on his hands. And Satan comes then with this. Satan accuses them before God as transgressors. The great deceiver has sought to lead them into skepticism. To cause them to lose confidence in God. Have you been there? Het jylle al vertrouwen in God verloor? Ja. To separate themselves from his love and to break his law. Now he points to the record of their lives. Dat is een boek van zonde. And the defects of character, the unlikeliness to Christ. This is what you've just told me at the beginning of the sermon. Which has destroyed this water the Redeemer to all the sins that he has tempted them to commit. And because of these, he claims them as his subjects. So this is what happens currently in heaven. Your name comes up. And Satan comes and he says, Yahweh, sorry, I'm going to go to And he looks at Yahweh and Satan says, No, Lord, Yahweh has done this and this and this and this and this. He belongs to me. Jesus does not excuse his sins. Jesus does not step up and say, No, Lord, Satan is lying about you. He does not excuse his sins, but shows the penitence and faith and claiming for them forgiveness. Who claims forgiveness for us? The blood of Christ on the cross is only relevant to us when we when we, when we repent and we make it personal for ourselves. The life of Saunders, what is it in the most? Confession. 
al hulle sondes voor die Heere gebreken. Die kleins denk voor dit forgiveness, die lucht is wounded hands, die volle vader, en hou die eindels, en lissen ons die raad sê, sy, I know die, by my, I know die by my, I have grinded die, on the palms of my hand, Die beste boodskap vir die Christendom vandag is Make sure Your name comes up For judgment But when he comes up Make sure You have repented of all your sins Because there is one standing there With blood stained hands Willing to plead on your behalf and all authority has been given to you to intercede on your behalf. And then he is there to read. She looks at the Bible and she sees this perfect God. And she sees her inability. And if you see your inability, make sure your name comes up now for judgment. Because that is the good thing. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise the Psalm 51, 17. And the accuser of his people, he declares, the Lord rebuked thee of Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a bad plucked out of the fire? Christ will clothe his faithful ones with his own righteousness, that he may present them to the Father a glorious church, not having a spot on a wrinkle or any such thing. Ephesians 5 27. Their names shall stand in hell in the book of life, and concerning them it is written, They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 3 4. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin and if anyone sins. We have an advocate with the Father Jesus, the righteous. Therefore he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. I beheld in the same way we war against with the saints and prevailed against them. And that's what's happening to you and me currently. Until the ancient of days come and the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High and the time came that the saints possess the kingdom. This morning, I just want to make it clear that you as a Christian at this moment in time has got one of two choices. Are you going to repent and confess all your sins to God? Why? So that it can be written in the book of life, the book of remembrance, so that your name can be blotted out of the book of sin. What happens in the most holy place is the cleansing of the sanctuary. You've got to make sure that all your sins has been taken into the sanctuary. Because this is the only option we have when we commit our lives to Jesus. So that He 
through the working of the Holy Spirit can transform our hearts so that we will enter into the work of God with God. This earth is going to come to an end pretty soon. Some Christians proclaim that you only have to believe in the cross. We do that as well. But we say there's another ministry to Christ. He's not just the Lamb of God. But John 1 29, John says, Behold the Lamb of God that does what? Takes away the sins of the world. He's not just the Lamb being slaughtered, He's also our high priest, ministering on our behalf for His glory. And this is why it needs to happen like this. There's got to be a record. Because there's always an accuser. And all these heavenly unfallen beings are sitting and watching. And they don't understand this plan of salvation. So your name comes up. Satan accuses you. The angels are watching. What is God going to do? Because the Satan's accusation against God is that he's not merciful. And he's not fit to rule the universe. And then Jesus stands up. And if this doesn't lock your world, then I don't know if it will lock your world. When Jesus stands up and says, Yeah, he's mine. I know him by his name. It's edited in the palm of my hands. And God goes. And he scratches out Jan's name out of the book of sin. Who of you want to worship a God like that? Who of you believe that the judgment is the greatest gift that God has given to humanity, but just not humanity, to the universe? Because through the judgment, God's character is revealed to humanity.
Please make sure that you commit all your sins to Christ. So that He can not just forgive you, but He can cleanse you and not just you. The sanction needs to be cleansed. The universe needs to be cleansed of the sin of God. Amen. Is there any questions? I'm willing to take questions. Because I want you to understand this. You can. Is that repentant? That's repentant. If it's if it's true, if you realize what that sin has done to God, not to you. If you can name him name, there's some we can't name. And that's where Jesus steps up for us. So when we get judged, our whole life gets judged. From birth till death. God takes everything into account. And that's why I say that is the good news. Because God presents this to the universe. And he says, look at Father from that. The first 22 years of his life. Absolute rebellion, selfishness. But look at my work. Because Satan has accused me. Look at my work when I entered his life. Look at the transformation that took place. Now the universe can judge. Easy, a just God, and easy, loving. And easy, merciful. So yeah, thief on the cross. He says, remember me. And will he be in paradise? Mm-hmm. Sure. But he converted his life to Christ. That's what we need to do. So everything we have that is in opposition to God, and that you've got to figure out for yourself. You've got to lay it down. Because that is the sin. We need to let go of. Uh-huh. 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 In a little bit of a call, but I do what you say, yeah. And it means, um, the other part of the cup is in my own system, the system is open, and then after the open, you are in the year of a better system, so that I can install the solar thing. Yeah, but, um, ongelukkig. Verlossing is a persoonlijke saak, so I can't even get back on the other one, and I can't even get my point here, but that's not the Holy Spirit. The holy place, just before the most holy place. That is a personal thing. So that is your personal experience, your personal walk with God. But now, so long, we can at a later stage speak about it. But when we need move into the most holy place, where Christ is currently, that is for cleansing the sin, the sanctuary. Okay. So every person has to go on his own through whatever, for through all those functions of the holy place. But once the high priest enters the most holy place, that is to cleanse the sanctuary and to cleanse us. So now I can't pray for my mother's sins. She's got to do it on her own. I can't pray for my wife's sins. She's got to do it. I can pray for her life. But God intercedes there and, and reveals himself to her. But I can't repent on how long of that. So you have to stop. It's longer than this one. That was the next one longer than that. Yes, but I don't have to talk about it. I don't have to talk about it. 
want hy daar is een verskuld is en vergifnis, dis wat by die kruis gedeel, so forgiveness of sins happens at the cross, removal of the sins, is wat is dat in die moest aan die kruis, ok, en uh, 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 John 3, 16, we gaan het draai met die mens gaan, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, so he gave his only begotten son for the whole world, and this is where we get it wrong. We, we pray for people's forgiveness. We already forgive it for what happened in Calvary. What we need to do is to make sure that forgiveness we make it personal and apply it. We must ask Jesus to apply it in our lives to cleanse us not just to forgive us, to cleanse us from our sins. Okay. And, and at a later stage we can we can talk about what sin is. I've given you just a small definition that anything that is, is opposing God is sin. Okay. That what was in Satan's heart, that is sin. Opposing God and opposing his work. Right. Any other questions? Jesus, baie dank jy vir die liefde en die genade die weer ons het jy so nodig in ons levens ons is so gefokus op die hier en die nou maar ons vergeet dat jy thans in die allerheiligste staan en al wat jy wil doen wanneer ons naam opkom en Satan die aanklaar ons aanklaar is om die hand in die licht te steek en te sê Hulle is myne. Hulle naam is gegeer op my hande. Met my bloed het ek hulle gekloop. En dan gaan God die Vader daar die boek optel. Die boek van die sonde. En hy gaan hy sonde verweide. Ons naam verweide in die boek uit, as of het nooit vir die huid doen. Maar mag ons ook die realiteit besef dat wanneer ons naam ook kom en hy so in die belei is nie gaan Jesus nie kan opstaan en sê sy naam is al van grafie in my hand en dan gaan God die vader die boek van die lewe opvat en ons naam daar uit van my hand wat beteken ons het niemand wat van ons in die lewe en dan is ons in die moeilijkheid. Daarom draag ek die mensies aan die hoofd, vraag jy met hulle te wees, met myself, wat ons hierdie ding as ergens sal, sal opneem, wat ons daar oor sal bring, en dat ons ons levens totaal nie sal toevertrouw weer, en seker maak ons naam is in die boek van die lewe. Dankie vir alles wat jy vir ons doen, jy die wereld stier spoedig af na sy einde toe en ons weet nie hoe lang gaan jy wat daar vir ons intree daarom is niks meer belangrik as dit nie wees met ons as my gebed in Jesus naam alweer Amen